All right, so somebody asked me how I create vegetation, so I'm going to go through the whole process here relatively fast. This isn't a modeling tutorial, and it's a lot of steps to it. We're going to be using Substance Painter, Substance Designer, Blender, and um, probably Quad Remesher or something as well. First up, I need a... I'm going to modify the cube, delete the bottom face, I don't care. Um, but I need like a tree stump or something, I don't know. Something more interesting here that we can play around with and have a little bit of a hard surface object. And so, um, go ahead and make that out real quick here, real quick. And so, if you grab all the loops, you can do uh, loop tools, right click, circle it, and all that fun stuff. Now, I'm going to press Control 1, subdivide it, apply it, go into sculpt mode, and uh, so Control A to apply your um, subdivision real quick. I'm going to actually subdivide it a little bit more, just so we have something a little bit more interesting to look at here. And I'm sculpting, I'm going to use faces only I'm using uh, clay strips not a big deal I just want to give it some unique kind of roughness to it real quick and so this isn't the primary purpose of this but I want to show how you can create solid mesh and um, cards and everything all at once I think it's pretty useful uh, nobody showed me how to do this necessarily in this manner and I think you'll find it quite interesting so let's say we got a tree stump we're not we're not going to go for like um, super detail or anything we're just keeping it kind of simple right and so i think that's pretty good let's go ahead and control b and smooth vertices real quick oh select the whole thing smooth vertices there we go right click shade is smooth so we could consider that like a low poly perhaps right uh, nothing too crazy nothing too great but uh, we can apply a multi-resolution to this subdivide it one more time and um a couple times anyways sculpt mode and now we can add a little bit more detail we'll do one more subdivision there you go and so go ahead and go in here and start uh, just adding a little bit of texture to this not too much i don't think i don't think blender is really that great for doing like high frequency sculpts meaning like a lot of fine detail texture work um, but it's okay for like mid poly stuff and low poly stuff it's really good for modeling um, basic generic shapes and stuff in my opinion of course, you can take up the polygon count as high as you can get it, and uh, wherever you stop at, that's your limit, right? Uh, I know personally here in Blender's, um, my limit's not that high, but in ZBrush, it's much higher. So I can get about 10 million here, and I can get about, you know, 150 million in ZBrush. So big difference, right? Uh, not too good of a performance here in Blender. All right. And so. There we go. We can knock all this out, make something more interesting. We'll bake this into a low poly, basically. It's like we created both at the same time. So um, here in the viewport, turn it up to max for a second. And we can do something called shape apply base. So our base right now looks like this. When we apply base, you'll see it updates the high resolution to this low. And then now they're matched pretty much one to one. And it's going to work out pretty well. Okay, um, we do have to uh, UV map this real quick though, and so let's just get that out of the way. I'm just going to select this loop here in the middle. I think that one eh, cut out this side. So using cursor selector, get rid of that real quick. I want this to be a, a scene like that. It's kind of an odd shape, right? And then maybe right here, I can just pull that one down, mark a seam. So Control E, mark seams. There you go. If I press A, U, unwrap, and go to UV editing see it unwraps like so. Uh, now I wouldn't actually straighten this one out. I don't think it's worth it. Uh, it's going to cause too many problems, but that is horrible usage of UV space obviously. So there's definitely some considerations here you might want to take into account. Uh, maybe you want to split it twice, for example. Maybe like one down this side as well. So you might be able to get a little bit better UV space usage by doing something like that, perhaps. Okay. And so a lot of times when you're creating vegetation, though, you need to create um, leaves and stuff like that. Generally speaking, it's a good idea to just go straight into edit mode with a plane, rotate it 90 degrees. You want the normals facing in whatever direction you want them to face. It doesn't matter. And then you move it around, whatever. And so a lot of times you're doing grasses or leaves or whatever. It's just a plane to get started and bump things down. Keep it symmetrical for now if possible. Okay, something like that. You can bevel, mouse wheel up, do that number. Cool. Uh, more than likely you're going to split it down the middle with a loop cut. You're going to subdivide this. 
And now you can apply that subdivision and you have a, the start of a leaf, basically. That should work out pretty well for you. And you can, of course, uh, use proportional edit. So if I turn proportional edit on over here, I can grab like a certain section and move it out and do stuff like that. Uh, you still want to keep these very kind of simple. Most of your vegetation work, you're going to want to keep very, very simple for the most part, um, quite a bit um, until you get into further down the line here. So you might want to sculpt on this. It's a possibility. Uh, but for now, we're going to keep everything real soft and kind of like uh, stylistic in nature. Um, I do want the origin point, though, right here. So shift right click, place the 3D cursor on that surface. Shift uh, shift S, you can do cursor to uh, whoop. Here with machine tools, we can place the um, origin point to the 3D cursor. And then hit Control A, apply rotation scale if we need to. Um, if you weren't using machine tools, you can do uh, set origin, origin to 3D cursor right there. Okay. And so add ons help with tree creation a lot, um, or vegetation creation, should I say. Uh, so there's one that's called Sapling Tree Generator. Most people have heard about this one, but. Um, if you go to Edit Preferences, Add-ons, Enable Sapling Tree Generator, you'll see that we have now um, a curve, and we have, um, oh, I actually disabled it, my bad. So we got to go to Add-ons, and there's Sapling Tree Gen right here, enable it. And there's also um, IV Generator, which is pretty cool. Okay, so you can enable those two. Those will help you out quite a bit. So for example, I want to create... I'm going to create another plane real quick. Something like this. Just toss it over here. Let's go ahead and create curve sapling tree gen. Uh, you'll see it comes in like so. We can do this number, load this out. There's all kinds of options in here, but there's some presets at the bottom. So um, this will get you to a good starting point for trees and stuff like that. Now, just keep in mind, large trees, you're probably going to end up creating what's called canopy trees or mixing canopy with kind of a, a stickier workflow. But... Um, there's different techniques you'll use along the way to create different things. I'm going to talk about creating canopies here in this one, uh, but we're not going to create the whole thing, okay? And so, um, in this case, like a willow tree. Oh, you can see I just got an error, I guess. Okay, that's cool. Let's try that again. Sapling tree gen. We'll create this, whatever it is, we'll leave it there. But uh, you can put leaves on this. So you can see leaves, show leaves, bam. And so hexagonal leaves is useful, rectangular, um, but you can duplicate faces, which is cool. You see here we're duplicating faces. It's actually using this as the uh, leaves, which is not a good idea. Um, but you could use something uh, different, like in this case, I think it's uh, plain, the first plane, right? You can see it generates the leaves like so. This doesn't line up with this, so of course it's going to misalign the leaves. So you actually have to select them. And I'm going to use machine tools, but you could use transform. Um, align to transform orientations over there. With machine tools, Alt-A, you can align them up real quick like so. And uh, not too bad. I don't think that quite did what I wanted, but um, maybe let's move this uh, stump out of the way. You'll see that the leaf is still here. It's down here at the bottom. But I might need to apply rotation and scale to these. I don't know see what's going on oh there's no backside to this that's why i'm seeing that okay so um a lot of times your leaves so you can make a tree like that super fast right like it's pretty cool but um uh, let's say this leaf here mm, i'm gonna alt p and clear here i should get rid of it there it goes and so um let's say this leaf right here we're gonna lay it out manually later on uh, we might want to do like a solidify on it Okay, bump it out a little bit. Might want to do a subdivision surface. We might want to do a couple of uh, other things like a simple deform. We'll do three simple deforms. Okay, apply rotation scales to this. You can see it's already going crazy. Uh, the first one's a twist, do it on Z. That'll give us some twisting in that direction. These are gonna be bends. Okay, and one's on Y, one's on X. So we can bend it and we could twist it, all right, cool. And that gives us some unique transformation options there. And um, a little bit of depth to it now. So cool, we can do things like that. But um, this is all fine and dandy, all right. But there's going to be another option here. 
which is going to be um, press in create IV generator you'll see here that we can add new IV add new default blah blah let's add new IV and we can see it created it down here okay and a, a lot of times you can get this stuff to just like um, grow on things which is cool but trying to think of how to use the thing I haven't used it in forever so if you move it near something I believe this is how it works I don't know why the origin points off but I believe you can make it like regrow and stuff I don't know oh it grows near the 3d cursor is that what it's doing yeah so right here um, let's do add new IV bam there we go but yeah, it's been a while since I used this thing. The the trick is that um, IV generator is really good for certain things. You can see you're gonna make your adjustments. Uh, max IV length, maybe not three meters. Let's do that too. IV size. Add new IV. Oh, that didn't work out. Add new default IV. All right, so basically the same thing as a tree generator. It's been a while since I used it, but you get the idea. You can make little little meshes out of this thing like this, like super fast. And it also comes in with leaves and stuff if you want it to, right? It's insane. So, um, yeah, play around with those. See how they work out for you. I do things destructive and manually. I'm not going to do the leaves on this one. Um, we're going to use this as a base of all things. We could literally take this and um, we could create like a, a trunk or whatever. In this case, we got a start with one. Why not? Let's do this. Um, let's say this is covered with some kind of weird plant. We can just do snap, face, median, align rotation to target. And um, as we're moving this, we hit control and just watch it go crazy. Um, we can literally lay out things like super fast. And we can even attach this to that. See where this is going? Now imagine having leaves already on it, right? Pretty cool. So there's a lot of ways to work with vegetation, but um, doing things manually, of course, is, is my preferred method. So I go create a Bezier curve, delete the original, use the straw tool, and we can just... Psh, 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 yep, done. You gotta have the sound effects too. And uh, so get out of the draw tool because it will mess you up. S, Z, and zero, scale those all near each other. Cool. Right. And um, we can go to its options, geometry, bevel, a little bit of this. Rotate that one. That looks ridiculous. Okay. So sometimes you gotta rotate them. Grab the tips here. You can do Alt S. You'll see you can scale each one of those individually. But if you have proportional edit on, you hit Alt S and you make it bigger. There you go. You see we can actually do the whole the whole thing at one time so um, pretty useful i think and then once again we'll go um we're going to right click convert this to a mesh now we can actually place um, an origin point here in the middle if we want All right on these they have to be separated so p separate by loose parts there you go so now we should be able to grab each one of these in, in edit mode you hit alt q i always forget about this dude it's like i'm still not used to using it but alt q you can switch between them and now you can just um, do two phase apply 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 rotation and scale to all those now you have some sticks to work with and this is usually where this takes off because you could literally make like little bushy uh you see like trees are very um abstract almost like they're, they're not necessarily like bushes and vegetation in general, they're not necessarily like set in stone type ways of working, right? And so you can do things like this, which is absolutely insane to me, right? And so um, this also can help make a canopy, right? You, you could lay out a bunch of leaves on it and then just do this number. And this is what a canopy tree texture looks like usually. Something like this. Sometimes it's like a half of one. Like it's like um, it's something like this. All right, people turn this into a texture and they lay it out on a card to create canopy trees, which is really simple. It's like a branch. It's kind of like what we're doing down here. All right, 
then of course you can always take something like this join it with this one down here and then you could just you know um whoop, join them actually join them no mesh data to join is that still a spline or something what's going on here no that's fine oh i guess these are instances let's convert them to mesh or they're splines my bad so we'll just convert them to mesh and then join them to this there splines bezier groups now you see where this is going this is just gonna it gets more insane trust me this is the start of it so this doesn't line up but to the face you can change this to uh volume right and so yeah volume there we go yeah that works and so i think it's too large personally i think it would be better if it wasn't like that but you really wanted a really weird sticky kind of bush plant maybe like a pine tree almost this is just i guess one way you could do it there's probably a better idea is to make um, little segments of leaves that do this number where it's like you know, kind of like out like that something like that maybe so these work really well as well so this is kind of like the same idea as creating a canopy card right canopy something like that let's get rid of these or you know my performance we'll get rid of one of them we'll bake one out Okay, and so um, we don't need all of this, first of all. So we can we can do these weird things. Let's just make sticks here. And we'll just uh, snap them into place and cut. Right. Probably should have um, grabbed the, one of these guys placed it like right in the middle here I don't know it feels like a good idea but maybe not so you can uh, proportionally edit these still so you can grab like all of these go to proportional edit don't forget like if you try to do a proportional edit and it new normally does this uh, turn it over to connected only set it to linear and you'll get a better kind of like stick maker proportional edit out of that and uh, do rotations as well. So you can grab a little section, do a little rotation to it. All right. You can also try doing uh, random, which is interesting, but it doesn't always give you the best results. So sometimes, you know, it adds a little deviation to the surfaces here. Just scale it ever so slightly, and it'll do that with proportional edit. Make your proportional circle thing as big as you need it, though. So that can occur. Right. So uh, we got all these kind of things done. We got the stump. Let's go ahead and Let's just move this out right there. We're going to um, control A and apply all transforms to that since it's right in the center for the most part. All right, so uh, some of these are going to be low polys and some of them aren't. Uh, so first up, I know I want this down here. I think I'm going to scale. Let's join these together real quick. See, it's very destructive what I'm doing here, by the way. Very destructive. So there's other ways of working with Substance Designer. There's there's tree generators, right? There's all kinds of ways of work. But I want to make this as like a like a little square, basically. Yeah. So we have individual leaves. We got like a little bushy section, which is nice because we might toss it into that. Who knows? And um, it's kind of laid out almost like a square. This should lay out right here, so it's gonna be a UV map. Um, we need to take all of this. We're going to bump this back up in the viewport real quick. This is going to be our high poly meshes. Okay, so just call this one high poly. Okay. And real quick, you can see we got all this in here too. Let's take these, and I don't know how they escaped, but let's move them to the high poly. Okay. So they're all in there. Good. And now we can actually um, duplicate collection. I call this low poly. Okay. This is going to be kind of fun because all we got to do here is create a plane. Go into edit mode, rotate it. All right. And all we're doing with this plane is literally dragging it out like this. Okay. Yeah. 
That's it. That's all we got to do. Um, now, preferably, we're going to be doing this in substance. You want to create a vertex colored um, for your high poly. This is this is our low poly collection, I think. Right? Let's turn off. Okay. This is our low poly collection. All this stuff here for the low poly is nonsense. So press H, select all that, delete it. Press Alt H, bring that back. There you go. And now what we can do is um, we got the high poly, we got the low poly. This here, we're going to bump back down to um, one. We're going to triangulate this. We're going to triangulate this because we're going to substance. You have to triangulate things going to substance, trust me. Um, the high polys here, um, you need to triangulate as well. Okay, this can be a little bit problematic though, um, so you need to make sure they're all converted to a um, a mesh. Select them all and start applying triangulations to everything. Now, uh, I know for a fact that um, Hard Ops here has a triangulate modifier. When you would use this, it, it it applies the triangulation to all of these right here. So that's cool. That's actually a huge time saver. Otherwise, you have to do it kind of one by one or copy modifiers. And sometimes it's not possible if you got your, if your mesh is um, using the modifiers, like the bin modifiers, if you don't convert it to a mesh and then copy the modifiers, you see what I'm saying? You got to convert it all to a mesh, which is more destructive. And so that's not always good either. Um, this here, I'm just going to select all of this. Go into edit mode, press U, unwrap, bam, done. UV editing, let's go in here. Uh, the only thing I needed to do when I press unwrap, I need to make sure that I bump the margins out a little bit. And so um, that should be okay-ish. Check the scales here. This is one. This is one. Okay. So that's appropriate. It's all laid out um, as good as it's going to get anyways in this case. Okay. Now, this is what's interesting because um, we're going to duplicate the collection for the low here. And duplicate collection. Bam. There we go. So now we're going to make a cage. The cage is going to be interesting because um, right here, uh, we don't need this amount of multi-res for that. We probably should have had it low here as well. Let's see what happened here. It was on one. Sometimes this works good. Sometimes this doesn't, but we'll see what happens. A lot of times you got to convert it to a mesh. So one, we'll try one on that one. Okay. And this one is still triangular. So this is good. This is still triangular. Um, this one, however, is uh, we're going to turn on the high poly so we can see everything. Press E, and I'm going to press X, and I'm going to extrude it out like this. So it covers it. That's it. Turn the high polys back off. There you go. Um, for a moment, just for a moment. We need to apply a material to this, and this has just regular material on it, which is cool. Oh, by the way, the low poly here, take the material off. Don't use materials on these. Okay, high poly doesn't matter, the cage doesn't matter, but um, this one particularly, uh, I'm going to remove the original material on it. I create a new one. Go down to viewport display, color, change this to whatever you want, and then bump that alpha down a little bit. Okay, and so now what's going to end up happening here is we'll apply that material to that and that material to this. And that's our cage material, right? So cage mat. And so, um, when we turn the high polys on, we can see where the cage is being uh, intersected, if it is being intersected. So we can grab the um, the cage mesh, and we can tell it the difference between them now. Uh, we can go into edit mode, hit Alt S, and uh, scale it out a little bit, something like this. You don't want to go too crazy with this, but um, you know, get it out just as far as you need it. And then where it's still having issues, you can just go through and uh, Alt um, Alt S here, and probably turn proportional edit off, but I just bring those little sections out a little bit. And you'll see that this has, um, I think, the subdivision on it still, right? The multi-res? Yeah. And so that's a little bit um, confusing, but you get the idea. Sometimes it's better to be more destructive, right? I'm just going to expand the whole thing out a little bit more, I think. We'll get a majority of it going a little bit faster that way. So right, right there, actually. Okay, is it all covered with the blue? Yes. All right, and so there we go. We now have a cage, we have a low poly, we have a high poly. We are ready to bake. 
And so with that in mind, actually we got to export first. So um, let's go ahead and take all of the low poly stuff. We're going to make this the active element. Press Control S, export FBX. We're going to export this to desktop. I'm just going to call this plants. Uh, this name here is important, by the way. Name this what you want your asset to be. In this case, I want plants 01. Okay. And so selected objects, FBX default settings, bam, done. Turn off low poly, grab the high poly stuff, select it all, make that the active element. I don't know if that actually matters, make it active, but uh, we're going to export. We're still using selected objects, so this is going to be high. You could just call this plants high or whatever, I guess. Plants 01 high. I mean, keep things organized and neat, I guess, right? So plants 01 high. I should capitalize that. There you go. Done. Might take a second to export on that one, but now the cage, same process. So we got um, plants 01 cage. Bam. Let's go to Substance Painter, right? And so, uh, new project. We're going to be doing PBR metallic roughness with alpha test. This is important, okay? Uh, 1024 is fine for now. DirectX, compute tangent space. Select our low plant zero one here, and uh, we're not using UV tile work for that's for UDIM. I ran into that problem earlier in a video and I figured it out that that's the problem. Don't use UDIM if you don't need it. And um, so this is where it all kind of comes together because this is very, very easy edit baked mesh maps. Bam, uh, high definition mesh, click, use the high, okay, use cage, use the cage, okay. Not changing any other settings other than the resolution to 1024. Bake it. All right, now it's going to go. Blah, 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 blah. There we go. Done. And so this bakes out pretty quick and efficient, and we should work out really well, actually, for this. Now, the problem is, is this is supposed to be transparent, and it's really hard to paint on this thing when it's not transparent, in my honest opinion. It kind of messes with your head a little bit. Now, because we used the template uh, with alpha test, what that did is all it's done is created. Uh, or change our shader to the PBR metal rough with alpha test. This is where you change your shader at, right? Right over here. It's alpha test and alpha blending, but usually um, just regular PBR workflows, PBR metal rough. So it doesn't have that ability. Now, uh, that's great and all, but what it's also done is under your texture set settings, it's created an opacity channel, right? So if you don't normally use this, this is where a lot of tutorials will tell you to go through and create an opacity channel and this and that. Okay, no, it's all set up pretty much for us now, and we're pretty much good to go. The only problem is, is we don't have an alpha channel set up uh, with a opacity on it, right? An opacity mask. So uh, we're going to use Substance Designer. Substance Designer, a lot of people, you know, you know, new substance, blah, blah. That's not really required. Uh, the Explorer tab. You right-click, new package. You don't even have to save this or nothing. You can just right-click this, click Link, 3D Mesh. And now we can do a um, we can do the um, low poly plants zero one here, and then on this one we can right click bake model information. Substance Designer has uh, a baker. Most people don't realize this, but uh, it definitely has a baker and it works and it's really awesome in my opinion. But we're going to change it to 1024 first off the bat. PBR or uh, PBR <laughs> PNG, and then uh, default anti aliasing into eight samples. Okay. And we don't have anything else set up. Let's add the high definition here from files. And we'll do the high right there. And now set distance width instead of values, cage path. There we go. So we can use cage from file. Here's our cage. Okay. And uh, what we're baking here is the opacity mask from mesh. That's it. Okay. We need to set an output folder. I'm just going to put this onto um, the desktop. Okay, so set your output folder. And once you get used to using this baker, it's awesome. So uh, you can see here the UV layout, nothing special. Start render, it should work, hopefully. We'll see what happens here. It shouldn't take very long either, just because it's an opacity, nothing else. And voila, there we go. We have an alpha transparent opacity mask baked out, and it's already on the desktop, so we can go back to Substance Painter. And over here, uh, we're going to create a fill there. Right, this fill layer, we're not touching nothing in here except opacity. That's all we want. We're going to import, click the little import button, add resource, grab that opacity mask we just baked out, change it to a texture. I'm going to put it in the project, but you can put it wherever you want. And uh, project, import. You see it came in here, drag and drop, bam. It's now transparent, right? 
And so now you can have all the fun in the world uh, going through this and creating textures on it, right? So you can just create a paint layer if you wanted on top of that. Um, I'm going to do that just for example purposes, but let's say we had um, some green leaves, right? And so we want some green leaves. We can use smart mask, everything else. We still have um, a lot of stuff here that's baked out. So I think we even have curvatures. Yeah, so curvature exists. So we're doing solid mesh and a card at the same time, which may not be the best thing in, in all cases, but uh, you get the idea. You can actually do stuff like this, like it's nothing. And so um, you can certainly have a lot of fun with this. And um, you can just paint your models however you, however you see fit um, using whatever. And so this becomes extremely cool to work this way. A lot of steps, though, to get here, right? So uh, that's pretty much what's going to happen for you. It's going to take you some time. So I'm not trying to spend all day here painting these things, obviously, but you get the idea. Um, if you use vertex colors... I want to point this out. If you take your mesh, your high poly mesh, and you want to create color ID mask, um, you would create your vertex colors on these guys of whatever it is you want. So Shift K, you color that whole thing. Just keep in mind, it, sometimes it's hard to paint with vertex colors in Blender. Um, there's a there's an add-on called Crayon that I think works pretty well, but I don't do enough vertex coloring to use it myself. And um, so just keep that in mind. This is something, but your high poly mesh, you could even um, go into edit mode with all of it and then P separate by loose parts. And this should uh, blow it all into little segments. So you can vertex color every segment if you wanted, or you can just um, only separate certain things like the sticks and stuff. And so when you vertex color now, you'll get that going on. Also, keep in mind, this is vertex right now. If it, In the future, it's going to be called attributes or whatever. And so... Um, you'll be able to vertex color and um, do this number, right? And so shift K and you'll be able to see it if you turn that little section on for the shader and the, or the viewport here. And so uh, when you vertex color things, I'm not going to actually uh, show you. It. Well, I guess we'll do it real quick, actually. If we can, let's export all this out real quick. We got to re-export it, unfortunately. Um, so we're going to export FBX. This is the high, remember? Okay. All right, so we'll go back to Substance Painter. That should have been exported, I think. And uh, But we're going to do bake mesh maps. We're not going to bake everything. We're going to turn all these off except for ID map. Uh, so ID here, right now it's using material color, but we can use vertex colors. So if we bake this, uh, default material ID, one baking process, LC. Hey, tell, let's see. Let's see why it failed. Let's see. Missing input data. Check what. Um, Probably because the um, I didn't fully finish exporting, perhaps. So we'll try it one more time. Let's make sure it actually exports all the way. Okay. Usually it freezes my Blender scene until it exports fully, so I might have moved on too quick. Yeah, there. It's done. It's released. So it should, should be able to work now. Let's try it one more time. We're only doing the ID map, so it doesn't matter. It's not like we're going to mess everything up. Hey, I baked it. So we take a look at our ID map here. Bam. There you go. See how that worked? Okay. Pretty cool because this allows you to um, say you have a material you want to drop onto just one thing like the leaves. Let's say we want these to be cheese leaves. Uh, you click, drag, hold control. See, you can create mask this way. And then now you have quick way to drop different textures where you need it uh, which is super useful and but uh, for the most part we're kind of done here let's go ahead and just um, export all these out I'm going to use an output template um, I set up PBR metallic roughness output template a little bit different where it has a um, the mesh name right but normal and direct X normal and GL so you drag and drop these and set up your own little template so if you were to like um, create an RGB channel, you want a normal OpenGL there, you could do that, kind of set it up, set up that hashtag, kind of set up there, right, rename all these, it actually gives you a list somewhere, I don't know where it is, but it should pop up right here, anyways, so, oh, right here, look, 
project mesh textures and you those are little tags you can use so mine's going to use the mesh name now it just so happens instead of like using the material name or texture set name anyways uh, just so happens that because i named my model the way i want it to be named it's going to work just fine with that so um, unreal engine you could do unreal engine packed map, map if you need to but you might want to customize it a little bit uh, pbr metallic roughness is what i had set up based on output template based on output template so whatever you use in a substance painter um, the template first of all is going to control what file format but the size based on um, texture set size here this is going to use what's um, being used in uh, substance painter so in our case 1024 but otherwise you can do this number and you can export out other versions it's just going to be slower so i'm going to go ahead and just do um, based on texture set size place this onto uh, the desktop real quick and i'm just going to export there bam done and i can go ahead and go over to blender now all right in blender here um, we could keep working in this scene i'm just going to create an um from the low poly i'm going to um, duplicate this collection get rid of that low poly okay so this is just going to be I'm, I'm just going to call it game model i guess i don't know what else to call it but um there we go. So these two here, we can um, give them a new material. Call this texture, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to go to the shading tab. I'm using um, Node Wrangler add-on, so Control shift t go to desktop, and now we can actually pick base color all the way through to the roughness. Uh, I export out, like I said, the DirectX and the OpenGL version. Blender uses OpenGL. Unreal Engine uses DirectX. Unity uses OpenGL and back and forth and around we go. So uh, unselect this one, just hit control. You can use shift, click all the way through and hold control, unselect that, bam, import it all. It comes in just fine. We're gonna press the N key here, go to options. And we're gonna change this blend mode to alpha clip and shadow mode to alpha clip. And um, you'll see here that nothing has happened because we got to use the alpha channel that was locked away in, or the opacity mask is locked away in the alpha channel of the base color um, with that setup so we can just plug that into alpha and voila there we go now, we now have transparent texture this one over here we can do the same thing All right we can set it up texture you see what we had in substance painter is now over here let's go back to material preview uh, which is pretty cool but uh, this is just a card All right? We, this is what we would use to actually create rest of our model with right so i'm going to make these very simple but uh, how you cut these out simpler the better usually but if you need bends and curves to it then you need bends and curves you, you can't make them too too simple right and um probably should just took that one all the way out so let's try uh, doing a dissolve here let's just do a cut out around this one this one here we'll do a cut out around as well something like that for now Okay, you can't slide by hitting G twice. It doesn't affect the UV maps. But also keep in mind, correct face attributes up here. Uh, I'm not going to mention this or come up here to show you this again, but uh, correct face attributes can be pretty important. And uh, it will mess up your UVs. It'll start splitting them apart at some point. So keep connected helps, but then it distorts your UVs a little bit. So you're going to have to find a balance of using this tool. Now, uh, I have it on my mouse, so I can turn it on and off. Normally, when you move mesh, with a UV map, it does this number. It starts stretching it out. When you turn correct face attributes on, now you can move without messing it up too bad, um, generally speaking. But uh, what we're going to do is just select these background ammo. Let's delete them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and press Y, 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 Y. Okay, so that splits the face, so they're not connected to each other now. I'm going to turn uh, correct. Pay attention. If you're moving something, uh, correct face attributes can cause huge huge issues. You need to turn it off when you're not using it, for sure. Okay, so turn it off so it doesn't do that. But you can press A, P, separate by loose parts. Um, this is kind of the fun part here. Most of these should have an origin point that's flat with them. Okay, cool. And so uh, we can grab all of these, hit control period. Um, this is all of their origin points right now. Okay, just like we did earlier. And... But now I can just simply grab, pull, right? Grab and pull. And just set these out. Because they're all flat. It doesn't really matter. And so we can kind of do the same thing as we did to start generating some of this stuff. Okay. You see, this one's really wild. Probably a bad layout for this guy here. But you get the idea. 
uh, more simple the better generally speaking for um, doing like leaves and clusters of leaves but you can see the normal maps on it it has depth information if we turn on ambient occlusion here and bloom uh, maybe bump up the ambient occlusion a little bit and uh, maybe turn that bloom off okay and then um yeah so this will start to look a little bit more interesting at least because of the cavities and stuff that it generates but uh, generally speaking this is pretty much the workflow in a nutshell like you can continue cutting these a little bit and maybe doing like little sections out like that or something and so you can start to bend like little areas like this right so press k use a knife tool do all that jazz i add a, like a cut in here so that this can pop out a little bit more that shape or bend it or whatever right there's all kinds of stuff you can do here and it just gets it's a runaway train uh, but you can also, uh, let's just lay out like a sticker real quick. You can see we can still snap these to volumes or faces and rotate them and all that fun stuff. So uh, we can put like a little stick here. We can do this. Let's make this stick smaller. It's too in my face right now. I don't like it. Okay, so let's do some things like that. Maybe this little brush is like hanging down out down here. Oh, this brush is, this brings up a good thing for um, smaller like grasses and stuff. A lot of times um, you might have to lay these out in kind of like little different patterns. So you're going to have to play with the, the way you lay them out, but like little triangular patterns are kind of cool sometimes. You do like numbers like this. and So you can do things like that and get some pretty decent looking results. You can also, you know, subdivide these and uh, bend them out and stuff as well. Right, you can do that number, add a loop cut in the middle and kind of pull the whole section in the middle out. You get you get where this is going? Like you still have a lot of work to do um, at this point, but creating it was definitely probably the hardest part, and that's the part that I know a lot of people have trouble with. Um one other thing I want to mention, this is gonna be the thing that I do at the very, very end here in Blender, um, because otherwise it just ends up causing way too many problems in my opinion. So because it's like an absolute final nail in the coffin of destructive workflow. And so, um, and that is going to be to adjust the normals of the, um, the mesh. Okay. Generally speaking, you can modify, um, like, like supply rotation and scale to all this. I'll pull it out here real quick. Um, you can take all of these and you can adjust the normals, um, Kind of together in a group. If I hit shift right click, you'll see that um, we got that down there. Normals are hard to see. You got to turn on in edit mode. You can turn this on, make the size bigger. These are the normals we're looking for. Okay. And um, we shift right click, put the 3D cursor down here for now. Um, I want it right in the middle of all this stuff. And so moving that 3D cursor around could be a little bit problematic, but. For the most part, I think we're good. Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, with all of it selected, hit Alt N, and we're going to do uh, point to target right here. So Alt L, all right. Control click somewhere at the base. You'll see they all point right here, but there's a problem. Not all of them are actually pointing to it, right? So you have to join this all together to do them all in a batch. This is why it's the nail in the coffin. So Control J, bam, there you go. And now Alt N point to target right there. That's what it should be doing. Um, after you you hit uh, Alt N or Alt L, point to target, hold Control and left click to place the 3D cursor. Okay, Control and left click. Then you'll get this. And then you got to click again. Now um, you can actually invert this and do this number, which is helpful. Um, there's also sphere rise, which is also helpful. So if we invert this and we sphere rise it. We can we can kind of control these in a group kind of manner and a lot of times we can get the results we want out of it by doing this not always sometimes you'll have to play around with the 3d cursor and just try to figure out where like the best position is for it usually just kind of below it in the center works out well and so that that's kind of the way we want to do our normals now this is just good for game environments generally speaking All right when you do this number and um, you have it all set up in that way it casts that what those normals are doing is it's looking for like its light source from this direction, right? 
And so if you didn't have that done and you just had it um, set up normal, like, um, let's see if I can just reset them here real quick. If it was set up normal, you can see that's not, eh, it's not really the best option there. So you can do that relatively fast here with native Blender tools, but I know for a fact that I used to use a better add-on for this. And then there was, um, there's supposedly another add-on now that I haven't checked out, but um, a lot of this stuff goes in hand in hand with each other. So it really kind of starts to add up, you know, like when you realize you got to get all this stuff done and um, somewhat efficiently and fast. It's it can be quite a, quite exhausting to be honest, to work through a whole project like this. You know, it takes me on average uh, when I'm doing a, um, a more serious piece of vegetation, it takes me about an hour to two hours, right? Um, it, usually because I got to paint it, it takes closer to two hours. It's not, not the fastest process. That's obviously not in the right spot. So we'll do that. And um, yeah, I mean, it's not like the prettiest thing, but you get the idea. We have cards. And we have all that going on, which is cool. Okay, so let's talk about canopy trees for a second. Um, canopy trees are really, really simple, though. It's basically the same process, except instead of actually having these leaves, it would be like a patch of leaves instead of being sticks. Um, you would have them kind of tossed near branches and things like that. And you might do something like... Um, you might place them up near the, the top of the card... If you're using cards like that, okay. If you want to have little patch segments, kind of doing numbers like that, that could be useful. Um, but you could always, you know, have it go to an actual piece of geometry like a branch, you know. So all that fun stuff occurs like that. Now don't go crazy with polygon counts too much. Um, you know, a lot of trees um, in a scene <laughs> tend to add up really quick. So you don't want to go crazy with a triangle count. So make sure you check statistics you know what you're using and, and whatnot because I guarantee you right now uh, 73,000 faces eh, I don't know I don't know so much about that one it seems a little high huh and so I'm wondering if that's just from this here because of this piece yeah so if I bump that down you see that's a thousand so that's why you bake things right there I'll leave it at level one, so I could probably lot it down uh, pretty heavily still. Leaves themselves, 86, that's not bad. So um, this piece needs to be optimized, but you get the idea. that You can, you can work these things um, pretty efficiently. In this case, I don't like the way this is, um, is working. I'm going to scale it down in the middle. Just going to see what happens if I scale it down. You can do some really weird things too and maybe get away with it, you know. Not necessarily. It has to be a hundred percent perfect, perfect, but the better, you know, obviously the better, right? The better it'll look. Yeah, I don't think I would go with that. That first scale was okay ish, but yeah. Alright. Cool. And so hopefully you enjoyed this video though and you learned a lot. That I know it's kind of fast and it's, it's hard to follow along, but it's one of those one of those topics that if you know you don't just go full speed on, it's gonna take forever and a day to get um anything out of it. So anyways, um yeah, I think that's that's gonna be it on this one. Fortunately my texture works just not good enough for a thumbnail for that whatever that was, but anyway, so hope you enjoyed the video and I will check you on the next one. All right. Take care.